Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're going to today just take a quick deeper look into what we mean by the ecliptic and the path that the Earth takes through the whole solar system on its path uh, in one year around the sun. So let's start with a sun right in the middle. And not to scale, we'll draw what we mean by the ecliptic. It's the path that the Earth takes around the sun. And although it's not a perfect circle, as we talked about with Kepler's laws, it is really close to a circle. Of course, it's nowhere close to this particular scale. This is very much not to scale. We could fit actually 100 suns all the way across between the sun and the Earth, uh, and we would still have a little bit of room to spare. But for the purposes of fitting it all onto one light board, we're going to crunch that down a bit. Now, if we think about this briefly, out in space, in all different directions, all three-dimensional directions, there are stars. There are stars that are between me and the camera where you are. There are stars behind me, way out in the darkness uh, back here. And there are stars that are a little bit in, uh, behind the light board, in front of the light board, but there are a couple that would be right uh, on the light board. Basically, the few that happen to be not too close or too far in this room uh, where I'm recording. And so if we imagine, for example, all of these different stars, so some of them that I'm drawn, uh, they're a little bit outside the, the view. Okay, we fixed that a bit. Now, if we imagine that I just spent uh, the next 15 minutes drawing stars, not just on the light board, but maybe I had magic powers and I could draw a star here in space. I could come around to the front of the light board and I could draw stars there. We've now filled the three-dimensional volume um, with stars but we would still only have this set of stars that are perfectly in the exact same plane as the Earth's orbit. Because by definition, in order to draw on this light board, it has to be on this same plane, not in front of and not behind. Okay, so now if we imagine the Earth, okay, I'm not gonna keep drawing the Earth every single time, but we'll start with one example Earth. Let's say that the Earth is here. Okay, maybe it's uh, April 21st, that's my birthday, and I'm celebrating, right? And we look, first of all, if it's the daytime, we'd be looking in that direction towards the sun, never look directly at the sun, but what that means is all of these stars here that look like they're behind the sun, they would not be visible at night on that day because they're in the same direction as the sun, and as the sun rises and sets, they will rise and set as well. If it's nighttime though, so party, right, nighttime, we look in the opposite direction, and then we would see uh, stars that are high in the nighttime sky. We would be able to see this set of stars really high in the midnight sky on April 21st, uh, because they are as far away from the sun as possible. Now, if we let time move forward, the sun would st stay still in our view that we're going to use, and the Earth would move around in its orbit. From the sort of top-down view of the Earth, uh, it rotates around counterclockwise. So again, I'm not going to keep drawing it. I'll use the marker itself to indicate. But now if we were here, maybe it's a couple of weeks later, we were here, the stars that are in the direction of the sun, some of them are the same as they were before, some of them are different. These stars that I circled, the ones that were really high on, um, at midnight on my birthday, they're now a little bit um, lower in the sky when we look at midnight. They rose earlier, now they're going to be setting sooner at midnight. As we continue on through the sky, eventually we get down here and so it's a couple of months later, so April, May, June, July, maybe it's July 
4th, we're going to have fireworks. It's going to be awesome. If we were trying to look at what stars are in the direction of the sun, they'd be a whole completely different set of stars than they were on April 21st. They would be most of the stars that I drew above the, um, above the view of the camera. They would be um, up here totally different than the ones that weren't visible on April 21st in the daytime and totally different than the ones that were visible very high in the midnight sky on April 21st. And then if we were looking at the nighttime sky, oh, even that's a little bit too low. If we were looking at the nighttime sky, uh, probably we'd be looking at our fireworks, right? But if we were looking at the stars, it would be a different set of stars than the ones that we saw high at midnight on April 21st. And as the Earth continues to move around, then every single day, there's a slightly different set of stars that are really high in the midnight sky and a different set of stars that are really high at noon and not visible to us. If we imagine then going all the way around over here to October, October, I can spell, October 21st, then when we try to look at our daytime skies, we don't get to see any of the stars that we saw on my birthday uh, during our party on April 21st at night. They are all behind the sun and not visible to us. And the stars that we can see really clearly uh, in our uh, nighttime sky in October are these, the ones that are completely invisible to the poor uh, partiers on April 21st. We look out at nighttime, at midnight, and those stars are really, really high in our sky. And then we keep going around, and every year, every time that we get back to April 21st, these are my nighttime stars, and these are my daytime stars. And this connects a little bit with uh, astrology, because when we think about all of the stars I've drawn here, they might be grouped into constellations. So maybe these two uh, circled groups, we're going to pretend are um, constellations. And maybe if we look, we realize that April 21st, when I was born, there was a certain grouping of stars here. And I don't know the exact one off the top of my head, but we're going to um, go with my actual star sign of Taurus. It's not quite right. But in the direction of uh, my view from where we were on earth when I was born. We look past the sun and we look at the um, constellation of behind the sun, the ones that we can't really see but are actually still there. Then I would be given the star sign of Taurus and that is my astrological sign. Again, we've talked in week one a little bit about how astrology and astronomy are completely separate things. Astrology is a belief system. Astronomy is a science. But it's Astrology is based on a little bit of science and observation. And so April 21st, Taurus is behind the sun. I can't see it at all, but that's what would give me the star sign. It's actually the first day of, of Taurus. And all of these stars at nighttime, if we were here on October 21st looking back, I don't know the star sign for October 21st, but this constellation would be the one given to somebody born on October 21st. And if we looked, there are actually only 12, 13 constellations that we could draw on the light board. All of the other constellations, there's 88 in our sky, but only 12 of those are the ones that fit on our light board. All of the rest of them are, like I said, behind the light board or in front of it. And so they aren't ever going to be the perfectly lined up ones uh, behind the sun on anybody's birthday. So hopefully this gives us a slightly better sense of the three-dimensional nature of things. It's important to keep in mind a couple of thoughts. First of all, as the Earth moves through its path, there are going to be different stars that are blocked from our view because they're out during the day and different stars that show up at night. One of the things that we work on in the lecture tutorial book uh, is thinking about the fact that if we waited from April into May, for example, then these stars that I've circled here, 
They were incredibly high in the nighttime sky for my birthday on April 21st. But once we get into May, they are closer to setting than they were before, which means every day stars rise earlier and earlier by just five minutes, just four minutes of difference. And every day stars set sooner by four minutes. And that's how over the course of an entire year, 365 different uh, portions of four minutes, those add up to a full day's worth of change. So that by the time we're halfway around, these stars are now rising six, uh, 12 hours sooner than they did on April 12, uh, 21st. And then we get back to April 21st and they're back to where they're supposed to be. If you have specific questions about the ecliptic, try going through the Seasonal Stars lecture tutorial uh, and thinking a little bit more about the motions of the star in the stars in the sky based on the fact that daytime is when we look towards the sun and nighttime is when we look away from it. So that's all I've got for you uh, for this particular topic. Uh, and so there we go.